J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Swing the Jinx Away from Born to Dance. Sometimes the easiest way is the best after all. And when it comes to ending a meal, for instance, what could be easier to prepare and what could be better to taste than Jell-O? Grand, refreshing Jell-O, adding such beauty to your menus with its six glowing colors, bringing such swell satisfaction with its six delicious flavors. Jell-O never fails to please. It's just as rich and luscious as fresh, ripe fruit itself. That's why Jell-O today is the most popular gelatin dessert in the entire world. But remember, there is only one Jell-O, and only Jell-O brings you that extra-rich, fresh fruit flavor. So get the real thing. Insist on genuine Jell-O. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that rising young movie star, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Well, hello again. This is Jack Benny of the cinema, whose uh, latest picture, the big broadcast of 1937, has just been released. Uh, by the way, Don, have you seen the picture yet? Oh, no, Jack, but I'm dying to. Oh, you ought to see it. It's playing uh, downtown at the Paramount. Yes, I, I know. Oh, say, tell me, Jack... Uh, are you pleased with your work in it? Well, I, uh... Well, you know, Don, I'm not conceited. You know that, don't you? Why, uh... Yes, uh, of course I do. I mean, you never heard me rave about myself. But really, I'll surprise you in this picture. Really? Well, I honestly believe that for the first time, the screen has captured the real me. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad to hear it. And you know I'm not egotistical, Don. You know that. Oh, of course I do. But in this picture, I'm really much better than I think I am. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just can't find a word to describe my performance. Well, uh, Jack, would you say you were, uh, uh, terrific? Well, yes. Yes, Don, I would. <laughs> And you know, Don, there's one big romantic scene in the garden where I ask the heroine to marry me. You know, I get down on my knees and I plead with her. I say, Gwen, Gwen, darling, will you marry me? And as the moonbeams cast their magic spell over us, she looks into my eyes and softly whispers, no. <laughs> well, I saw it and cried. And Don, you know when a fella can cry at his own picture, well... Uh, tell me, Jack, now, how do you look on the screen? I mean, how do you photograph? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Don, you know I never brag. Now, you know that. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. Well, now, come here a minute. Now, don't misunderstand me. Uh, you've, uh, you've seen Robert Taylor, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, oh, let's not talk about it. <laughs> come on, now, I want to hear some more. No, no, Don, no, I'm acting like a kid. No, <laughs> Then, Jack, you, you really feel that you've established yourself as the great screen lover? Definitely. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, Don, I was so good in those love scenes that in my next picture, they're just going to give me a leading lady and a Davenport. <laughs> oh, really? Well, Jack, uh, now that you're established as a Hollywood star, how about a testimonial for our product? Oh, sure, Don. I'll be glad to. There's right. nothing high hat about me. Now, let's see. Uh, I can truthfully say that Jell-O is a four-star dessert. And I never go into a major love scene without first indulging in a dish of tempting, delicious Jell-O. 
Thank you, Mr. Benny. Oh, you can still call me Jack. <laughs> Say, Don, we're uh, continuing with Anthony Adverse tonight, aren't we? Oh, yes, yes. I want to speak to Phil about the incidental music. Uh, pardon me a moment. Love sends a little <laughs> gift of roses. <laughs> Hello, Don. Where's Jack? Why, he's over there talking to Phil. Oh, say, uh, Mary, Jack was just telling me about his picture, the big broadcast. Have you seen it? Yeah, and oh, boy, what a picture. Gee, it's swell. Well, confidentially, Mary, uh, how's Jack in it? Jack? Well, Don, you know I'm not conceited. You know that. Yes, Mary, yes. And you know I never brag. No, no. Well, he's lousy. <laughs> well, you know, he, he's certainly changed since last week. He's not the same modest Jack we knew. I don't like the way he's acting. Neither does Paramount. <laughs> well, tell me, Mary, how does he photograph? Don, come here a minute. You've seen Robert Taylor, haven't you? Oh, certainly. I've seen him in a lot of pictures then you know it can't be the camera. I see. Love sends a little gift of roses. Oh, uh, hello, Mary. <laughs> hello, dear. Hello, Ham. <laughs> Oh, Ham, eh? Evidently, you didn't see my picture. I did, too. Then I don't see how you can possibly say that. What about that emotional scene where I'm making love to the girl, where I'm pleading with her with every fiber of my being? Well, I'll admit that was funny. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, my talent doesn't stop at love scenes. I had a lot of comedy in the picture, and I got plenty of laughs, believe me. Hello, Don. How are you, Kenny? Oh, hello, Kenny. You almost missed that, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Oh, say, Jack, I went to see your picture last night. Oh, did you? Uh-huh. I took my girl with me. Well, well, did you laugh? Yeah. She says the funniest thing. Hmm. That's fine. You go to see my picture and you laugh at your girl's jokes. She, I had to. She bought the tickets. Well, why didn't she laugh at my jokes? She heard them before. Oh. Say, Jack, why don't you stick to radio and forget pictures? Oh, yeah? Now, oh, buck up, Jack. You'll make good yet. Hmm. I certainly have boosters in this crowd. Oh, well, gee, I thought I was good, but say, I don't know. I liked you, Jack. Thanks, Don, but that would mean more to me if you'd seen the picture. <laughs> I don't know, I guess... I guess I was just over-enthused, that's all. Gee, I don't know, and Mary didn't like me either. Oh, I was just kidding. You were not. Say, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Maybe my acting wasn't so good. Say, we all make mistakes, only... I just happened to be in front of a camera. <laughs> oh, Jack, cheer up. Hey, maybe I'm not the type for pictures. I don't know. Say, Phil, it's about time for your number, isn't it? Okay, Jack, anytime. Yep. Say, we can't all be gables. You know? Answer the phone, Mary. Hello? Who? Uh, just a minute. It's for you, Jack. Waukegan calling. Oh, Waukegan. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello, Dad. Well, well, this is a surprise. Yeah, I'm glad you called. Oh, I feel all right. I just had a little disappointment. Nothing important, just my career, that's all. <laughs> What's that? You did? Well, how did you like me in it? Really? No, kid. Oh, you're too sweet. I couldn't have been that good. What's that? Opposite Garbo... Oh, Dad, you just said that to make me feel good, and you certainly did. Well, gee, thanks, Dad. I can't tell you how happy I am you called. Yeah, give my love to everybody. Goodbye. Oh, oh Dad, wait. Uh, how does my blue suit look on you? <laughs> That's good. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. Hmm. Opposite Garbo, eh? Say, who can tell? Love sends a little gift of roses. A play, Philip.
That was A Night in Manhattan play, uh, from the big broadcast of 1937, played by Phil Harris and his Phil Harmonic Orchestra. Woo. And I want to tell you, Phil, either that was very good or I'm feeling better. No. Thanks. Say, Jack, I heard the gang ribbon you before, and I want to tell you something. Yeah? I saw your picture twice. It's swell. You were great. Why, you stood out like a sore thumb. <laughs> oh, you're... Uh, you're, you're not kidding now. Huh? No, really, I mean it. Say, Phil, uh, did your orchestra boys see my picture, too? Yes, sir. They were all there. Yeah, what did they say about me? Jack, you were great regardless. <laughs> hmm. Why don't I shut up? <laughs> I think you got something there. I think so. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, last Sunday we presented part one of our version of Anthony Adverse. Before proceeding with the second installment of this classic, I will give you a brief explanation of what transpired in our play last week. I think our listeners would like to know what happened. So would I. Very well. For the benefit of Mary, who was in the play and don't know what happened, I will explain. As you may recall, I played the role of Anthony, who at the age of 10 arrived at the Casa di Bonifeather in Italy and asked for a job, which he received. Uh, oh, Jack, who played the role of the Casa? Nobody. Oh, no casserole. Ten years later... <laughs> he married the cook's daughter, Angela. That was me. Quiet. And immediately after the wedding, Anthony was sent to Cuba alone to collect some money for Mr. Bonifeather, his employer. From there, he went to Africa, where he became a powerful, wealthy, greedy owner of a rubber plantation. <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? Gee, do I have to have a reason? <laughs> hmm. Well, anyway, the heat of the jungle, the chant of the natives, the beat of the tom-toms, and Mary's laughter finally shattered his nerves completely. He <laughs> fell to the ground, dragging the curtain with him, thus ending the first half of Anthony Adler. <laughs> we will pick it up. We will, pick, we will pick it up from that point immediately after the next number, which will be sung by Kenny Baker. Oh, Don, in my resume of the play, did I leave out anything important? Well, only the Jell-O is the largest selling gelatin dessert in the world, and every day millions of people eat it. Oh, yes. Without that, there would have been no suspense. <laughs> Jell, Kenny. <laughs> To dream about angels, but then I never knew that I'd ever meet one, and such a sweet one, have I met you. When did you leave heaven? How could they let you go? How's everything in heaven? I'd like to know. Why did you trade heaven for all these earthly things? Where did you hide your halo? Where did you lose your wings? Have they missed you? Get back in If I kissed you Would it be your sin? I am only human But you are so
That was When Did You Leave Heaven from Sing Baby Sing, sung by Singing Baby Baker. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we continue with Anthony Adverse and take you back to Africa, where we find Anthony still delirious, surrounded by a group of awe-stricken natives. Africa, the jungle. Angela. Angela. Hey, Bumbo. Yes, sir. How's the boss getting along? Uba gooba delirious. Uba gooba still delirious? Gooba. Well, shut my mouth. <laughs> Mr. Edwards, mm. Mr. Edwards, wake up. Mm. Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's that? Delirious. Delirious who? Delirious Del Rio. <laughs> Water. Give me water. That's what I want. Water. Yeah, you is, boss. I want to go back to my wife. I want to go back to my sweetheart. Boss, ain't you kind of fickle? <laughs> I want to get away from this infernal heat. This jungle. Look, boss, look. Here come a white man. White man? Too late. I've already signed Phil Harris. <laughs> yes, it looks like he's coming this way. I'll call to him. Hello. The... Hello. <laughs> oh. Anything wrong, stranger? Yeah, you're supposed to be further away. And besides that, I'm dying. Dying, poor fellow. I want to go back to Italy. Back to my wife. I'll take you back to your wife. Why doesn't he mind his own business? Why? Have no fear, stranger. I'll bring you back. Who are you? Frank Buck. Frank Buck. <laughs> Hooray, he'll bring me back alive. <laughs> ah, natives. Natives, at last I'm leaving here. But come sing to me. Sing to me once more the song of the jungle. Jungle bell, jungle bell, sing the law. <laughs> Two years later, Frank Buck's boat lands at Leghorn, Italy, and docks at the Casa de Bonifeather. The crew is unloading the cargo. <laughs> Hey, Joe, come here and help me check this cargo. Okay. Let's see. One lion, two tigers, four giraffes, one ringtail monkey, two black monkeys. Hmm, here's a funny one. What's this? It's me, and let me out of this cage. <laughs> two years in a cage with these monkeys. Boy, am I sick of peanuts. <laughs> hey. This is this the Cassidy Bonnyfeather? Yes, sir. The place has changed. Well, I must go in and see Mr. Bonnyfeather right away. Come in. Hello, Faith. Are you still a working here? Anthony Adbert, it can't be you. Oh, it can't, eh? How's Mr. Bonnyfeather? He's dead. Dead? How's business? Likewise. <laughs> well, I don't care about that. Where's Angela, my wife? She's, uh, uh she's, uh... Where is she, I say? Don't look at me like that. Where's my wife? She's in Paris and has become a famous opera singer. Didn't you see this morning's paper? No. Well, here, get a load of this. Hmm. Give me stars, column. <laughs> Your correspondent has it on good authority that Angela Adverse and Napoleon Bonaparte are that way. <laughs> this golden voice canary and the emperor were seen holding hands at the Emperor State Building. <laughs> where they were building and cooing. My wife and Napoleon, huh? Well, I'll put a stop to that. I'm leaving at once for France. Goodbye, Faith. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
Who are those other two girls, Faith? Hope and Charity. <laughs> I'm off to friends. I sure get around, don't I, folks? <laughs> Twelve years later, an Anthony Adverse arrives in Paris. We take you now to the Villa of Angela, where we find her singing to Napoleon. She is rehearsing for the opera. Mademoiselle from Armateur's Harley Boo. Mademoiselle from Armateur's Harley Boo. This is the part that they cut out, but I can do all right without. Hinky dinky Harley Boo. <laughs> Ah, mademoiselle, this was magnificent. <laughs> Your voice, it thrills me. You should have heard it before I had my tonsils out. Ah, ma chérie, come to the arms of Napoleon. Ooh, la, la, too sweet. Teach me, my little Mackie Mouse. <laughs> Oh, Nappy, I'm so happy. Come to Pappy and sit on my lappy. <laughs> Wait, who's there? Anthony Adver. Anthony, my husband. Quick, Nap, you must hide. I do not leave you, sweetheart. I hide under the table. Hurry, hurry, please. Come in. Angela. Anthony. How was our honeymoon? Great. I wish you'd have been with me. <laughs> Oh, Angela, I'm so glad to see you. Come, fall into my arms. Uh. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Butterfingers. <laughs> oh, Angela, let me look at you. I've missed you so much. Oh, don't talk now, Anthony. Kiss me. My darling. Gesundheit. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Who's that under the table? Uh, under the table? Oh, just the legs. Well, they're trembling. <laughs> it's cheap furniture. Legs, eh? Legs, what are those knobs on them? That's the bony part. <laughs> That's what I thought. Come out of there, you. What are you doing under that table? I'm looking for my chewing gum. <laughs> are you Napoleon? Am uh, I Napoleon is asking? Wait a minute. Weren't you Carlos Cibos, the Cuban, last week? Certainly. And now you're Napoleon? That's me. Cuba, France. How can I keep from running into you every place I go? Why don't you hire more actors? <laughs> you chiseler, you? <laughs> hmm. What's this world coming to? You leave your wife for 20 or 30 years and you can't trust her. Well, conditions are bad all over. <laughs> they are, eh? Well, listen to me. I love Angela, and I'm not giving her up without a struggle. You'll have to fight, Napoleon. Come on, take your hand out of your vest and fight. Wait, Anthony, don't quarrel. You must choose between us. Look at me. Do you really and truly love me? Yes, Angela. With all your heart and soul? With all my heart and soul. Is your love undying and unselfish? Yes, darling. Then you get under the table. <laughs> No, no, I've lost you, Angela. So I might as well leave. But where can I go? If only I could find peace and quiet. Anthony, why don't you go to America? America? Yes, there you will find peace, quiet, and Indians. All right, I'll go. Goodbye, Anthony. Goodbye, Angela. Goodbye, Anthony. <laughs> Goodbye, rat. <laughs> Au revoir. Mr. Adverse, Mr. Adverse. Yes, Captain. Uh, you look so sad. What seems to be the trouble? Well, Captain, I've lost my wife, Angela, and I'm on my way to America, to California. Why are you going there? I am going to California because I have lost Angela. <laughs>
listen to some grand good news. The makers of Jell-O are introducing a new product, Jell-O chocolate pudding, a modern, easy, economical way to make rich, mellow chocolate pudding. Everybody enjoys that famous old-fashioned favorite, and Jell-O chocolate pudding is smoother, creamier, more chocolatey, more delicious. And it's as easy as this to make. Simply mix the contents of a package of Jell-O chocolate pudding with some milk in the top of your double boiler and let it cook until it becomes smooth and thick. Then when the mixture is cooled, serve it in sherbet glasses. You'll have enough for six helpings. Six helpings of extra good dessert for very little trouble and very little expense. Because Jell-O chocolate pudding sells at the same low price as Jell-O. See your grocer tomorrow and ask him for some Jell-O chocolate pudding. If he hasn't put it in stock yet, Make sure that he orders it for you. number of the third program in the new Jell-O series. I hope you've all enjoyed our presentation of Herbie Allen's famous novel, Anthony Adverse. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Who's there? Herbie Allen. Don't let him in, Mary. Good night, folks. The tune I'll sing you a thousand love songs is from the picture Kane and Mabel. The Jell-O program originates in the NBC studios in Hollywood over the Red Network. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>